cheer up about it. That's right. Stuart Nash. Thank you much. Thank you much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you, you might be surprised that Jonathan Coleman and I actually agree on something. I listened to a speech, and there's a line that he gave. I thought, you know, that minister is dead right. You're in the wrong party. Because what he said, Mr. Speaker, is now that the government is in surplus, they have choices. And they do. But unfortunately for the vast majority of New Zealanders, they just made the wrong choices. And it's a shame because, you know, you, you, you talk to the vast majority of New Zealanders, and I've, you know, I've talked to a lot of my friends about this, and no doubt because we're politicians, people engage with us in a way that they wouldn't normally. And you ask them, do you want a tax cut? And you know what? Most people say, I'd love a tax cut. But then you say to them, but would you like a tax cut or would you rather have a fully funded health system, an education system that delivers for all our children, a housing network that actually means that first families or first home buyers can afford something, social housing that actually means that those who find themselves in desperate situations have somewhere to go, a police force that's funded so when you're in trouble the police are there, or that there are plenty of community police keeping our community safe. And without, without exception, all my friends from the far right to the far left and everyone in between actually says, you know what, what I want is a highly functioning country and a society that looks after its citizens. This is not the preserve or the ideology of the left, Mr Speaker. This is the expectation of the vast majority of New Zealanders. Because it's the sort of country we grew up in, it's what we've come to expect and it's how we, how we sort of market ourselves overseas. Mr Speaker, the irony about this budget, and, and the ministers and members have, on the other side in government have crowed about this quite a lot, but the irony about this budget is the party in the, that in the past has been there for business and has been tough on law and order has delivered a budget that has, does nothing for business and underfunds a police force stretched to the limits. It's quite surprising, actually, and the, and the commentary has sort of reflected this, a sort of a puzzlement about what is going on. Now, let me, let me just briefly uh, mention uh, a blog that was um, put up by the New Zealand country manager of Zero. Now, Zero is hardly what I would call a left-leaning country. Rod Jury and I were at school together, and he's, he has done incredibly well in, in every single measure. But... Yeah, well, thank you. But uh, he's a Napier Boys High boy, of course. He did very well. It's a school of, uh, a school of high achievers, apart from me. But, but one thing that they say is, here the blog says, and I quote, one other gripe is there's little in the way of productivity support, access to talent, access to support for exporting or for small businesses in general, and no mention at all of small businesses for the regions. I mean, you would expect that Labor would be standing up here and saying, that budget is all about businesses and nothing for the workers. Well, there's nothing here for businesses at all. There's nothing here for the regions. In Hawke's Bay, where, where I'm from, in Napier, the city I represent and the electorate I represent, the business people were saying to me, what has happened to this National Party? There is nothing here for us at all. And the thing about productivity growth, Mr Speaker, is we can't keep working longer and longer and expecting uh, GDP to increase. We need to have a general increase in overall productivity, and yet the government is putting no incentives in place whatsoever for companies to invest in plant and capital and machinery and technology that will allow that increase in productivity. It is surprising, but this is one thing that we absolutely need. And of course, that leads on to jobs. And we absolutely need jobs, of that there's no doubt. Our leader, Andrew Little, has articulated a fresh approach to employment what we're going to do to actually create jobs for New Zealanders who want jobs. Because we have faith in our young people. We don't say they're pretty darn useless. We say they're pretty darn good, actually. And that is why Chris Hipkins has said we need an education system that's actually delivering for all New Zealanders, not just those who can afford to go to private schools, and not the high decile ones, for every single New Zealander. It's a quality of opportunity is the underlying political philosophy for most people, I would say for everyone in the Labour Party. And yet, if schools aren't funded in a way that allows us to deliver that, then we can't expect our, our young children to be educated and develop and grow in a way that's going to allow them to become productive citizens. We are facing a lot of challenges in this country, Mr Speaker. This government did have a lot of choices, 
but it made the wrong choices. If it actually had invested in education, if it had invested in, a, in healthcare, in a housing program, in law and order, then it would be very hard for me to stand up here and argue about it. But they didn't invest in any of these core social products and policies and, and ministries. Mr Speaker, let me talk about police for a moment, which is my portfolio area. The police themselves, the police themselves have admitted that New Zealand as a destination for methamphetamine, in their words, are becoming more vulnerable, i.e. there's a hell of a lot more meth coming in to our country. The police have admitted that despite the increase in seizures, the amount of meth, the price of meth and the supply of meth is, well, price is lower, supply is greater, and, um, and the ability to access it is easier. They are not winning the war on meth, and what the police told the government is we need, they were quite specific, we need 1,165 police over the next four years. Labor heard that, and we said, we're going to supply you with 1,000 police over three years. We'll do better than what the police themselves want. And what did the Nats deliver? 880 police. They knew what the police wanted. They had the, quite a comprehensive business case for how the police were going to use these resources to solve more crime, keep our communities safe, and put the bad guys behind bars. And yet, when you have a look at the budget and what the, what, what the, the success measures are, I just sort of shake my head and wonder if we're, we're living in a parallel universe. I mean, they've actually said that um, they're going to cut the budget for case resolution and support to judicial processes. In 2016-17, there are 100,000 cases prosecuted, and yet this budget is only funding 90,000 cases. It's as if they believe that crime is falling, and yet the stats simply don't show that. Our communities will tell you, and the men and women on the front line have got the evidence that crime is increasing. You can't just say it and believe it's true if the stats say something differently. Mr Speaker, it's surprising that the General Crime Prevention Services has only increased by $11 million, or $42, for every crime committed last year, when the number of victimisations increased by over 11,000. In fact, that is, uh, that's 222 extra victimisations per week last year. Burglaries are up over 10,000. And that is mainly to do with P. And yet we're not funding this part of policing in a way that's going to make a difference. And yet the, the, the amount of people that I speak to around the country on law and order, they're concerned about this. And partly they're concerned because they read about what's happening in the paper and they see what's happening on the news, but partly because they have an expectation of what law and order looks like in their community. We all, everyone in this house, grew up with the local Bobby on the beat, who was a, you know, usually in my case, a big smiling, you know, friendly chap who helped you out. That was in a day where, you know, if you were mad or bad, they'd, they'd, they'd grab you by the ear and take you home. But, but, the, but the most surprising thing was this, exactly, exactly, and they were allowed to do that, and it worked. Community policing works, and at the moment, we're retrenching numbers from community and putting them in the, in the station, and they're just not getting the advice they need to solve the crime, and the communities aren't feeling safe. Sir Robert Peel, who's the founder of the modern police force, said, police are people and people are police. That means we're all part of the wider community that's sort of charged with keeping ourselves safe and our community safe, and yet if the police aren't there, then we can't do that. But I suppose one of the things that's surprising, Mr Speaker, is the um, amount of money into road safety policing has actually dropped. It's dropped by $12 million, and yet if I have a look at the road toll for the first three months of this year, it's 11 Kiwis more have died on our roads. And we all know this. We all know when you're driving along and you see a police car, the first thing you do is you check your speed. And if you're travelling at 100 k's an hour, which I doubt anyone here would travel over that, you tend to break anyway. It's a, <laughs> it's a, well, you travel at 1k an hour, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we know that. But, but I suppose all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that you want to save lives. If you want to save lives, you don't cut the budget for road policing by $12 million. In fact, you increase it. In fact, Mr. Speaker, this cut in road policing is, is one area of the budget I can confidently but very sadly say is probably going to cost Kiwis lives. Road tolls around the world are dropping. New Zealand is an outlier because ours is increasing. I suppose just to sum up, Mr Speaker, what, what Labor has done is it's put forward a, a whole raft of policies 
that have come about because we've listened to what Kiwis are saying to us. We've gone around the countries and heard that people want an education system, a health system, and a police service, and first home and houses. And we've developed policies because of this. This budget does not deliver in a way that we believe and New Zealand believes fundamentally delivers for them. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.